My name is Terrell Cordes. Um, I'm living in Winchester, Virginia right now. Uh, probably be moving within a month, but I was in school for a little bit. So, yeah, that's where I'm at right now. For me, it's kind of like uh, the ultimate video game. Like, I'm someone who plays a lot of video games and, like, I don't know. I just feel like it's a little world where I can go in there and just build something and troubleshoot and see what works and see what doesn't. And there's no one to sort of get in the way of that process but myself, which, you know, is a challenge, but it's fun. <laughs> Well, I've kind of figured out that it, it works best to kind of find one sort of little idea that works really, really well, and then to try to build a piece around that one thing. Like, I feel like there's a couple of schools of thought where it's like, write what you want to hear versus writing what other people want to hear. Mm. And I feel like for me, I, I benefit most from trying to nail what other people want to hear versus just writing things that I care about. Because like, Quite frankly, I feel like the stuff that I care about won't sell. So <laughs> I have to kind of tune into like, you know, I have to be able to read the room and kind of like know what other people are expecting. And that also calls for me to become multiple people at once. Because there's a lot of different people you have to appease. The writing process is kind of more of like just trying to like imagine different types of people and like just thinking like, what would they do? What would what would they want to hear? things like that and then I just kind of noodle around and if it just doesn't feel right I know it's wrong it just has to be wrong so I try to change the music until it feels right sort of in my personality I'm very animated and I love getting into character depending on like you know whatever I'm, whatever story I'm telling like you know and I think that like you have to be just as animated as a composer for the instrumentation of my quartet it's like whenever I'm going from violin to flute to clarinet to cello those are all four different personalities to me, four different people. And so like, you just have to imagine like, oh, like what would this person do, <laughs> you know? And so like, then you think of like a flute line and then it, it makes sense for flute. And then uh, I kind of wrote about it in the program note, but I hadn't written for strings ever before this point. And so I just have to think like, what have I heard before? Like what, what do like really good violin players like to do? Mm. And so you end up kind of like trying, you know, different techniques that, for me, it's like a challenge to try to get it on the page, but to them, it's probably more intuitive. All you got to do is just noodle around until, like, is it a triplet? Is it a triplet or is it like a dotted, like, rhythm? And then, like, figure out the note. See what I'm saying? Like, you just figure out the rhythm. Like, whatever it is you're imagining is somewhere on a grid hmm. of music. So just, like, noodle around until you get right on the spot and then go to the next note. And then noodle around until you get it. And then eventually... Like when you practice that, whatever it is you're hearing, you'll just know, oh, that's like a major scale. Oh, and then you just like, see what I'm saying? And then it gets much more complex than that. But especially because I like do a lot of mixed meter stuff. If you can just like intuitively just know immediately what rhythms are, that whole process of trying to figure out what it is you're imagining becomes much quicker. So like anybody can do it. You just have to spend time with it. I used to draw a lot. I'm colorblind, so I got out of it. But I'm pretty good at drawing, and I, I feel like it's the exact same thing. Like, if I were to tell you to draw a hand, you know, you would try to draw a hand, and where it doesn't look like a hand, all you got to do is just erase it and, like, fix it. Like, make the finger look like a finger. And, and then you might have to erase a lot, but then eventually you're not going to have to erase that much. You'll just draw a hand perfectly. And it's the same exact skill, but people will be like, oh, I can't draw. And I'm like, how? Just do it. And then if it's not right, fix it. Like, just fix it. Well, I don't understand. <laughs> I like to spell things out in, in a way that people who are really, really good at their instruments, they don't really need all that. And um, whenever, like, sort of I've had, like, the piece reviewed in, like, master class settings, that's usually the critique is, like, you know, especially for, like, um just like really extended technique things. Um, just kind of like understand that the players themselves will kind of do those things on, on their own and that I don't have to be so specific because it kind of gets in their way. Like I, I never leave a note naked. It always has like a staccato or like a tenuto or like something over it because I feel like 
Mm -hmm. If I'm not clear, they're not going to know what I meant. But it's okay to just leave a note. <laughs> like, they're good musicians. Like, they, they know what to do. <laughs> Definitely, because I write a lot of wind, wind ensemble music, and when I say a lot, I mean, I've only been writing music since my second second year of undergrad, so that's like 2017, so like, I've only written a few pieces, but most of them have been wind ensemble pieces, and uh, I kind of skipped the whole, like, starting with chamber pieces and, like, piano stuff and just, like, really, like, doing the basics and, like, just figuring it out the right way. And so I've paid the price of like writing a lot of really muddy kind of bad music because I just didn't spend time working with just four voices and, and nailing counterpoint. I've realized that the best music, like it doesn't have to be really big. Like this quartet ends up being something that for me, out of like all the things I've written, at least in my in my mind, it's like the cleanest and like the most enjoyable. And I think it's because I actually like spent time like trying to make sure that all the voices worked together instead of bumping into each other as soon as you're working with like 64 different instruments full score or whatever you know it's like it's just so easy to accidentally like bump into things because you just get carried away with all the different possibilities and so having like a lot less possibilities but then still trying to imagine something really big it's fun because then you just have to like make the cello be like the whole low brass and the low reeds and like it's cool. I started writing a concerto and that's what I, I never start out the right way. I always just go full score and just start just putting stuff in. But uh, I started out with piano and I try to keep it for voice and like because like the quartet went well in my mind. And so I was like, I really want that same just cleanliness to be applied to my process of writing like big music so you know that really helped me kind of like at least with movement one of the concerto I think I think I got carried away like after that but like <laughs> yeah <laughs> it helped me quite a bit I started out on clarinet and I didn't even really want to do band in sixth grade but my mom just kind of made me and um, I was really intimidated by, like, the choices of instruments. And I thought that, like, I was 12 years old and I didn't have any musical background. So I just, like, really had no idea what I was looking at. And so, like, I saw a trombone and a trumpet. And I was like, I thought you had to, like, be a jazz musician to play those. And I was like, I don't know jazz. Like, I can't play those. I chose clarinet because, like, I had seen Squidward from SpongeBob. I mean, he played the clarinet. And he was like grumpy, but like, you know, it was familiar. And so uh, I picked the clarinet and then um, whenever marching band came around, I just felt like the clarinet was just so small. It was just so weak. <laughs> and like, I couldn't like play loud. Like my reed would crack in half if I played as loud as I wanted to. <laughs> and so like, I had to learn a uh, baritone, like euphonium, but you know, baritone. And that was really fun. So like, then I understood like, woodwinds really well oh and then I picked up saxophone for like jazz band and stuff um in high school and then like I just felt like I had enough of the instruments that like I just loved them all and like I just I don't know I always just cared so much about like the music and like I'd be looking around in in the band room when everybody was playing and like everybody would be half asleep and I'm like I don't understand why you guys aren't like having so much more fun than you are but I got to undergrad and I was a, a music education major because like I don't know. I just thought you'd be a band director when you like all that stuff. And then I just realized, like, I'm not really a leader. Like, I'm usually the one that was, like, getting kicked out of class and, like, getting in trouble for, like, playing past the cutoff. And, like, I just laugh too much at everything. And, like, <laughs> I don't know. Whenever, like, someone's doing something bad, it's too funny to me. If I'm the teacher, like, I'm just not going to be able to, like, discipline them the right way. Like, I'm going to be laughing. There were, like, so many music education majors and, like, I just always felt like, you know, with everything I did, I always wanted to try to be the best. And I feel like that's like really hard to do in that realm. Like, how do I like outshine? Like, what do you have? Like, what do you do to outshine everybody in, in, in the music education realm? Like, I don't know. So I like saw that the composers were like, I don't know, they were all nerdy. And like, there was only like a couple of them. And like, it just seemed more like competitive. 
<laughs> and uh, I asked my dean if I could be a composer, and he basically said no. Cause, like, really? Yeah, because I hadn't written anything, and like I didn't even know what the heck I was talking about. I just asked him, like, can I be a composer? And he was like, have you talked to anybody about it? And I was like, no. And he was like, you know, he, it made sense. Like, I agreed with him. I was like, oh, you're probably right. He was like, most composers have been writing since they were two years old. I was like, oh, yeah, like, you know, just thinking about it. I'm like, I, who am I, you know? But, like, I downloaded MuseScore and was just, like, noodling around and then showed the uh, composition professor. And uh, they had to, like, force add me in because the studio was already full. But, like, I guess he liked whatever I was doing and wanted me in. So, yeah, that satisfied that little competitive thing and then I don't know I probably just like I don't know I probably just wanted to like get girls or something just being honest like that's probably what it was, it was like what would be like the most attractive thing I could do is be a composer I don't know. <laughs> yeah I feel like unless like you grow up in a situation where like how are you going to really know about it unless there's like a culture around you that like kind of encourages you to do that and like I was in music like I was in chorus and on the recorder in elementary school I wish someone said something to me about it because I think I was doing composer like things, but no one said that that's what that is. I'd always get in trouble because I'd be like picking up the other instruments and like playing other people's instruments and like, especially percussion. Like I'd be in the back of the classroom, like just like hitting the bass drum because like something about it just felt so just good. And then like the, the five octave marimba hitting the low C, like I just had to, you know, and like, those are composer things, but nobody nobody looks at it that way. It's definitely like a composer. There's like a, a natural like curiosity there, and that's what makes you get past the, the 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 fact that it's a lot of work. I think AI is gonna really change things actually, like parts and stuff. Like I never want to make parts, and I'm someone who's like trying to be a composer. So all the people that like you know can't even get past like trying to figure out like a notation software. If you had AI to just kind of like pluck what's in your mind and just Put it on the page you know that's like a you know there'd probably be a lot more steps than that but like that would be like very weird because then you'd have a lot of different people able to actually like enter into like creative spaces who are kind of like there's a barrier of just like technology they, they're not really tech savvy you have to be really tech savvy you know unless you're like really good at just with pencil and paper which i can't do that i mean I don't know. I mean, my teachers can. I can't. <laughs>
like other people's concertos to me that doesn't make sense like to me it's like i'm listening to like like if i were just to like give like an example of like and i think every composer that listens to a wide genre of music has probably ripped off like tool like there's like bands and things like this like anything tom york like there's like all these other sounds that aren't related to like classical music that i usually gravitate towards first like those are sounds that are way cooler to me than like whatever concerto from like 19 like 72 like it just ends up being something kind of dated like a lot of the sounds and then um i don't know if i'm trying to do something like a little bit different i have to be kind of like reasoning from like kind of like first principles instead of like all of these other analogies because that's what that ends up being is like in a, you write something that's like more analogous to another piece then if you just kind of like forget about all our other music and just start noodling around and think okay what are the rules of like this thing i'm trying to write and then try to just satisfy those rules like what's the form like what's the you know what's the like the whole thing supposed to be if it's like a sonata like make it a sonata then the genre though i listen to a lot of john mackey like that's my favorite composer and like it's because he came to my school when i was an undergrad and um i don't know i had written a piece that like i didn't even know who he was and uh we were playing a bunch of his music and that's when i learned like who he was and he was doing all the same things that i had been trying to do but so much better and i was like dude like that's exactly what i want to be when i grow up i want to be like that guy he helped me out a lot like he helped me get a, like a couple of like really nice commissions and um yeah he's just really good he's like who who i view is like the best like he's pretty much the best like if i could get if i could get to a point where i have the ability to write things that are as clear and um as like goal oriented as his music I'd be I'd be doing really well in my eyes, even if like nobody played it ever. <laughs> That's like my main influence, John Mackey, for sure. Hmm. I'd be like my musical father if that was a thing. I'm trying to finish up that concerto I've been kind of mentioning. Um, it's been kind of kicking me in the butt just because I didn't really realize how much restraint you have to have in the planning process otherwise you really build something that's too big for you to actually finish like it's really 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 important to just find one thing that you want to do and then build even if it's a long work like a concerto or like a symphony or something like that you have to like just like the crux of it has to be so simple otherwise you're you're doing too much and you like get yourself into trouble later the first time around my slow movement wasn't a slow movement at all and you just have to really really remember all the basic things and just never ever get carried away ever and then don't overshare because like if you overshare a bunch of really bad music people lose faith in what you're doing <laughs> i'm the kind of person where like i need a lot of like i need a lot of like I guess affirmation like I need people to like remind me that this is good so like I'll be sharing my sketches with people and when it's bad either the people that don't have the heart to tell me it's bad don't respond or the people that are like really close to me are like hey man like are you okay and I'm like what <laughs> and that means I have to like rewrite things and that's okay I'd rather know but it's always devastating and like it makes people afraid to tell me the truth but it's like yeah, it's just really important just to be very, very, very mindful in the very beginning stages of writing something big. Like, you cannot not take that seriously. You have to. And I don't know. It's just so important. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this interview and want to see more like it, check out the 30 by 30 by 30 playlist on our channel. For more information about the 30 by 30 by 30 project, check out the website linked to the right.